I stayed in a Himba village outside of Apuo and the Himba were so friendly. The kids even invited me to go out dancing with them under the moonlight. It was a totally magical experience. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So you ready to go explore some wild savannas and jungles? I'm excited to share Northern Namibia's top three places with you guys. Now, Namibia is a vast country and it has three main ecosystems. Up until now, a lot of the places we've looked at are in the southern part of the country. That's where you're gonna find the rolling sand dunes and the gravel plains. Now, when you go farther north, it gets a bit more verdant. So you have the wild savannas and farther north where there's even more rain, you find these verdant jungles. So I'm excited to share Northern Namibia's top three with you guys today. Let's go. Number one, Atosha. You simply cannot go to Africa without going to one of the big game parks or going on safari. And Namibia is home to some of the best game parks in all of Africa. Etosha is one of the largest parks in Africa at over 22,000 square kilometers. Etosha means great white place in Avambo, which is a regional dialect. And it's named after this massive clay pan that's the biggest of its kind in all of Africa at over 5,000 square kilometers. The flat salt pan makes for easy wildlife viewing as the animals will gather around the watering holes, making wildlife sightings almost guaranteed. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll get to see one of those. Chaton! <laughs> And if you're lucky, maybe you'll get to see one of the big five. There are so many magical creatures in Atosha, from elephants and lions, springbok, oryx, zebra, giraffes, cheetahs, and so many more. If it's your first time visiting a game park, it can feel like you're in a movie. When I was there and we were driving along the road, I remember seeing a giraffe in the distance just rise out of the tree and cross the road. I felt like I was in Jurassic Park. It was totally magical. If you're gonna plan a trip to go to Atosha, I would recommend going during the dry season to avoid the rain. And this is going to be during the winter months, running from May to October. Now remember, Namibia is located in the Southern Hemisphere, so the seasons are in reverse for those of us living in the North. When I went to Atosha, I stayed in the Namibia Wildlife Resort, actually inside Atosha Park. At night, they have these floodlights. I have to say it was completely magical. I saw giraffes and springbok just coexisting together under the moonlight. It was so beautiful. Number two, Apupa Falls. Ready for some off-roading adventure travel? Let's head north to Apupa Falls. Now, Apupa Falls is located in the Kalkaland region of Namibia. It's one of the most remote regions in the entire world. You can only get to it via a light aircraft or by a powerful 4x4 vehicle. The region's named after these beautiful waterfalls that are created by the Kunene River, which starts in the Angolan highlands and flows south about a thousand kilometers into Namibia, and it cascades off into a series of waterfalls. The steepest drop is about 120 feet. So the region's pretty difficult to reach, but if you do decide to take a vehicle, get ready for some serious off-roading fun. The drive is half the fun. Along the way, you'll likely encounter indigenous peoples native to both Angola and Namibia, like the Himba and the Ovazemba. When you do get to Apupa, you're going to see that it's completely untouched, and this has led the region to have a diverse ecosystem. And you're gonna find really unique Namibian flora and fauna, like the Baobab tree, which is also known as the upside down tree. A walk along the Kunene River is really magical. You'll encounter wildlife, beautiful trees, and you'll get to see indigenous peoples really living their everyday lives. It's a pretty common sight to see the local Himba people in the river doing their laundry and just enjoying life. The friendly faces of the locals I encountered really made my trip. I would recommend though going with an experienced guide because the region is wild and untamed and that's part of the allure. But when I was there, I explored with a local guide who advised me, for example, not to go in the river because there are crocodiles. I would not have known that. I might've been tempted to go for a swim. I was told definitely don't do that, stay out of the river. But if you take the right precautions, you'll be fine to explore this beautiful area and enjoy what pure freedom really is.
Number three, Apuo. Last but certainly not least, we're going to go to the Apuo region where you can find the Himba people. The Himba are an indigenous group that are native to Northern Namibia and Southern Angola. With a total population of about 50,000, they live in small villages spread throughout the region. Visiting the Himba is a one of a kind experience because they live in seclusion of everybody else and they maintain their traditional tribal lifestyle. They've managed to survive in one of the most hostile environments in the world because this part of Namibia receives very little rainfall. They're semi-nomadic people who generally live in homesteads near where their crops are cultivated, but you'll find them traveling occasionally to follow the rainfall and to follow animals and other sustenance. The women are so unique. They're known for wearing this ochre paste all over their body, which helps protect them from the harsh, arid environment. The women will do labor-intensive work, and that'll involve, you know, carrying water sometimes several kilometers back to the villages, gathering food, tending to the children, and even making jewelry for tourists. The men will tend to the livestock and they're often away from home for several weeks on end. I stayed in a Himba village outside of Apuo for a couple of nights when I was in Namibia with my local guide who also served as my translator and the Himba were so friendly. We exchanged stories about our different cultures and the kids even invited me to go out dancing with them under the moonlight. It was a totally magical experience. Visiting a Himba village is a must do for any trip to Namibia, whether or not you're a journalist or just a fun seeking traveler, I highly recommend it. And I have left the contact information of my local Himba guide in the comment section below. So check it out. If you ever go to Namibia, definitely contact her. All right guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe at the link below and I will see you in the next video.